Okay, uh, welcome back. So in this problem, uh, this is JMO4 from the most recent USH JMO, and it goes, um, you have an n by n greater squares. And then all the squares are either red or blue. So, you know, red or blue. That looks more like an orange to me, but like whatever. Um, and I would like to... Okay, so if I permute the rows... So you, if I permute the rows... I can, wait, really? And then also, no matter how you permute the columns, you can always permute the rows to restore the original grid coloring. Uh, huh. Okay. What? Really? Um, okay, so instead of red or blue, I'm only going to mark the blue squares with an X, because you can imagine like X's and not X's, and you want to, um, you know, permute the X's back to where they were. Um, so if you have just a single X, then it's not possible, for example, right? Like if, um, you know, if I move, if I, if I move the X down here in a row operation, no amount of call up swapping is going to save you. Um, actually in particular, okay. Um, here, here's what I can do. All right. Along the lines of, uh, <laughs> Stephen Stones, welcome back. Um, so there's sort of this signature that you can write where I can write the number of X's in each row and column. And if I'm swap, if I'm moving rows around, then these column numbers don't change. So these ha are like, so these guys are fixed by row ops. And then these guys are fixed by column ops. So in particular, these numbers have to actually be like constant, I think. Right, like if I don't have the same number of, like if if I have two unequal numbers, uh, like this one and zero, then I can like swap these and then no column operations will ever save me. So it suffices to consider um, configurations for which the all the numbers are the same. So, okay, the most boring examples are like if they're all zero or if they're all like, I guess n, in which case the grid is filled. So let's consider now configurations for which there are, let's, let's take as a first example, like the configurations for which there's like ones everywhere. So what that means is I'm looking at configurations for which there's um, exactly one X in each row and column or something like this. And the question is, does that work? Maybe that's my first question. Like, is it true that I can, um, if I do some row operations, I can perform some inverse column operations? Uh, is that true? Feels like it should be. Okay, actually, for one, it's like just um, you can't get any of them, right? Like for for I need I need a number. We'll we'll, we'll call we'll let M denote the common number. Um, number of ones in each row or column. And then for m equals one, you can get from any state, I think, to any other state. That's just true, I think. So m equals one is actually just fine. And there's like some number of this, which is n factorial. And then, okay. Um, does Miro have keyboard shortcuts? I feel like I should know this. Uh, let, let's find out. Actually, oh, we'll deal with it later. I'm like curious whether I can like switch pens with the keyboard so I don't have to... Eraser is E, pen is P. Oh. 
Uh, I can at least switch between pen and eraser with the left hand. Um, okay, so m equals 2 for n equals 3 is actually the same. Um, because for m equals 2, for, for, for n equals 3, like, is actually the same case if you swap the rows of the x's and they're not x's. So actually, I think for n equals 3, um, this is the only restriction. And so for n equals 3, the answer is equal to like 1 plus 6 plus 6 plus 1, which is 14, whatever that number is. Um, only condition is m. Okay, so that's fine. Let's do a bigger example then. Um, Okay, um, p, p over pen. So for n equals, f let's see like five and two or something. So for n equals five and m equals two, um, So is it true that if I have two things, then... Okay, let, let's... Hmm. I, I actually don't know. So if I... Let's, let's take like... There's like some more degrees of freedom that I can pick. Wait, actually, how do, how do I do this? Uh, okay, here, here's an example. All right, so this has two per row and column. And the question is, uh, can I always undo any... Well, right now rows and columns are symmetric. And... If I start by switching... If I switch these two columns so that I end up with... Um, Something like that. Is there any amount of row operation? If can I do? Sorry, this is a row operation. So you end up like this. Um, is there a column thing I can do to restore it? I want to say like no. Did I? Hang on. I didn't mess up n equals three, right? N equals three should just be what I thought it was. Yeah, n equals three row row and column operations for n equals where m equals one or m equals n minus one just amount to um like that they are actually permutations. So something different is supposed to be happening when m is two. Like But that feels weird to me that then But okay, I'm right that no row operations are going to say, no column operations are going to do the correct thing, right? Like once I do this row swap, um, like there's no columns at all that still have. Okay, so this is an example of something where I can't get back. Um, now, does every... Hmm. Okay, what is an example of something where I can get back then? Um, uh, 
So let me do like the most symmetric possible thing, which is, um... Might still be no. There might not be any, actually. I feel like the more I... So for n equals 3, when, when m equals 2, um... It turns out if you do this, this is okay, because you end up... It's equivalent to permuting like these untouched squares. But here's something different. Like once n is greater, I don't think this example will keep working because all I have to do is switch. Like if I just switch the first two rows or something. Right. And then I end up with um, like xx. And then something, something, something. Like somehow this pattern no longer appears, right? So it feels like once, if M is like not on the exact edge, something weird is going on. Um, okay, let me think how I want to set this up. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like the answer is just going to be 2 and factorial plus 2 right now. If you ask me to bet on the answer right now, like, I bet it's just this. Corresponding to m equals 0, 1, n minus 1, n. And I should... Well, right now I'm only swapping two rows at a time. Maybe if it's like, if I cycle it. Maybe it's, it's the opposite of JMO2. In JMO2, it was like I was trying to do a lot of operations at once, but it's actually easier if you just swap two rows. Um, here it might be the opposite is true, where if I do something that's more symmetric, it's a little cleaner. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, here, here's the idea, all right? Let's take a column, and a column has some pattern of, um, you know, the, uh, each column, uh, if any given column has a pattern of, like, x's and not x's or something. Well, actually, okay, this is not amazing because... Well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it this way. Actually, maybe I can just do it. So, like, take some random column. It has some patterns of, or like, dots and red cells and blue cells. And then a row operation means that, you know, I, you know, I can take whatever, okay, yeah, th I, th this is going to be a really big art, like, right? where I can take any thing that I want and move it however I want. So, like, for example, I could uh, imagine, like, um, let me... Shoot. Ah! Okay, I, I understand what's going on now. Um, yeah, this is like, you have to, you want to frame it the right way. But I can perform any permutation that I want on this column. And it will affect the whole grid. Um, but the, the net out, shoot, I want blue. Uh,
like something like this, right? Uh, I guess this is the thing that like swapped two things. Um, and what that means is that this column should appear in my grid somewhere. So you take the entire n by n grid, you switch, you zoom into one column like this, and then you're like, okay, I can perform some row operations to, for example, make this column look like this. And then that means that um, somewhere in the original grid, this particular pattern has to appear. But you can do this with any um, permutation. Like you can take, like in this example where n equals 7 and m equals 4, I guess, you can get any pattern you want, right? Like if, if you have, if I have, I guess, 7 cells and you can do any permutation you want, you get all the patterns. So the number of columns in the grid always has to be at least n choose m which is the number of different patterns you can get from these permutations. So this will automatically imply um, m has to be 0, 1, n minus 1, or n. Uh, yeah, we, we're still in the JMO. I mean, we I think we just finished JMO 4, but I have to write it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, but okay, yeah, I, I'm pretty confident this is how it goes. Um, th this should just work. So that gives you the other, other way, and so these are the only examples. All right, we did it. Okay, cool. I'm more scared of the functional equation because I'm not good at that kind of functional.